来台湾差不多十年了。Within these ten years, I've drawn Taipei, Dadochen, Taichung, Xinju, Jiayi. Currently, I'm drawing Hamasing, which is a part of Kaohsiung. There's also been a few smaller maps like Lersheng and Changchushan. When I start a drawing, it's usually somewhere that I want to explore. So I begin to look at pictures, look at any interesting landmarks in that area. I start to walk around it, explore a bit. Eventually, I start to piece together a drawing in my mind. To the point I can't not draw it, it becomes almost like an obsession. Then I begin. This is a lot of Ruben Shidae Jianzu, from Tongfu, Xinjiang Yuan, Sifa Yuan. They have a real like, see that? In the first world war, the war was destroyed by Tongfu. I think it's very few people know, because this journey is not in Taiwan. Originally, I was in quite a small room, and I had a very small desk as well. I couldn't fit large pieces of paper on it, so I took lots of small pieces of paper and I'd stick them together to make the larger drawings. And I always really enjoyed that because you could kind of see the city growing in front of you. About seven years ago, I told my family that I was ready to move back to England and ready to settle. But a couple of months after I told them that, I put the Taipei drawing up on Facebook just to see what happened. And I was very surprised because suddenly it was shared everywhere and a lot of people were commenting and a lot of people liked it. Some people invited me to exhibit it. I had to tell my parents, like, something's taken off here. I think I want to see where this goes. So I decided to stay in Taiwan and I was very happy that I did so. I'm naturally quite like a curious person. Walking around, I'd often be like, what is this place? What history is here? And so I'd learn a lot about Taiwan through that, and I generally feel like I knew the country a little bit better. When I'm not in the city, usually I like to go out to the mountains around Taipei. The insects were chosen especially because they're often like the most overlooked creatures of the forest. Um, most people pay more attention to the deer and the bears and this kind of thing, but uh, I wanted something that is a little less visible. Taiwan has a quite vivid amount of insects and a lot of things that I've never seen before. You only find it in Taiwan. Stuff like uh, the praying mantises, the locusts, the hornets, and especially sort of the giant spiders, which I'm both terrified of but also kind of fascinated by. The idea behind the insects was an expression of what I saw as the cities expanding continuously and in quite an unregulated way across not only Taiwan but a lot of countries. It was quite shocking how much of the forests and how much of the countryside has been lost even just 10 years. That's why the cities are sort of drawn across the insects, like taking over them. This is Taiwan. There are many great wildlife. I hope to help my people to take care of the I have the uh, uh, honor and the pleasure to actually talk with you and to learn more from your a very interesting work in Taiwan. Um, I am Trini Li. I am the director of Taiwan Studies program at University of Nottingham. It's a very interdisciplinary program. And this is actually why I learned about Tang's good work. It's from his uh, previous tutor, Professor Steve, Stephen Lake at School of Geography, where Tom actually graduated from School of Geography, University of Nottingham in 2010 as an undergraduate student. How could you from a Nottingham graduate student to be uh, settled in Taipei, to choose Taipei to settle down, if I can say so? I think from, from about 18 onwards, I traveled quite a lot. Um, I'm from like quite a small town in the southwest of England. It's called Exmouth. Perhaps you know it, not many people do. But um, 
it was a lot of a lot of my teenage years were sort of me trying to get out of Exmouth and <laughs> go and see the world a bit. Uh, I think that's probably why I ended up somewhere quite far from uh, from Devon to go to university. Yeah. Um, so I had this sort of drive to travel. I enjoyed geography throughout school, throughout A levels. Um, it ended up being the subject that I wanted to continue with, and then. It, uh, I found the department in Nottingham was, I had a really great time there. Uh, it opened a lot of, really opened my eyes to how huge a subject that actually is. Um, I, I, I didn't realize there was, um, such a sort of historical aspect to it before I went there. Right. Yeah. And then that made me, uh, I think I traveled again in the end of second year. Um, the funny kind of funny story actually our house our student house was burgled um before the summer oh. and they, they took pretty much everything but the insurance company was using Woolworths at the time so Woolworths just went bust and they had to replace everything with okay. money instead of like for like yeah so most of that stuff I did wasn't really using so I, I used the money to go to India um for a Good couple for of months you. Which is where I did the dissertation, um, my sort of third year dissertation. Ah. So I did the research for it there. Right. Uh, right. So while in India, I met some people who had been in Taiwan. Uh, they'd been teaching there. And I met someone who was about to go to Taiwan as well. And then I sort of put it on the map. And I spent the entire third year reading. The person who went to Taiwan kept a blog. Um, uh. and the entirety of third year reading that and more and more wanting to go there myself okay. uh yeah that person's now my yoga teacher weirdly enough but <laughs> okay <laughs> so, kind of funny how how about okay. uh, yeah we met in you India keep contacts and, and with and your you, teachers yeah <laughs> that's good that's good Tom this is very good yes so yeah um as soon as I graduated I decided to that I wanted to go overseas and um the plan the easiest way to do that at that time was to teach English. So I, I took a course in Nottingham straight after, straight after I finished my last geography exam, I think I started a teaching course. Mm -hmm. um, and as soon as that was done, started to look for jobs overseas. Taiwan was kind of number one since I kind of knew someone out there. I found a job for a recruitment company and then moved here and started teaching. Uh, the first year was intense and I, I didn't really have much time off. Mm. Um, I think I was working six days a week in the in the first year. Yeah. Uh, Saturdays, um, it was late night. I remember having a horrible late nights on Friday and then like a really early start on a Saturday with like a really big class of like noisy teenagers. Okay. Uh, I really dreaded that. <laughs> okay. so, Tough but, years. Um, yeah, yeah the, longer, the longer I stayed here, the more I liked it. Uh, the more I kind of put down roots, um, the more I became interested in the city around me and the country around me. Mm. And um, that eventually ended up feeding into the drawings and and the other work that I do here. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wanted to um, to ask you if you could recall when the first you landed in Taiwan, that first years, what kind of because to my understanding you you did not learn mandarin you were not close to the sort of the chinese taiwanese culture at all when you were in nottingham was that a culture shock yeah. a lot to you um yeah i didn't because i i wasn't sure which country i was moving to until about two months before i actually moved i didn't have time to learn much mandarin before i arrived yeah. here um there were elements that were difficult i mean that now obviously i have a smartphone and it's easy to get around the city a lot of a lot of sort of like the bus apps are in english now yeah, but yeah. when i arrived there was nothing like that like i remember getting on a bus getting off again having like learned the characters for it and then getting on the same bus back, but some of them go in different directions or, or take different routes on, on the way back. Yes. Sometimes I find myself on a bridge going over one of the rivers and be like, I'm pretty sure I didn't take a bridge. 
on the way here. <laughs> the only culture shock I really got was maybe work culture. Okay. Um, there's sometimes a bit of an indirectness in dealing with problems that was quite hard to deal with at times. Like it was quite hard navigating the kind of uh, interpersonal stuff at first. Like eventually, like that was not a problem anymore. And I kind of got how things worked and settled in quite well into all the jobs I've had here, really. What was the reason at the beginning for you to feel like, okay, I now I wanted to root it in this land? Taipei has a cer- just a certain feel to it, I guess. It's almost like you can't even really quantify it. Um, I remember coming out of the MRT station that's kind of close to where I was first living and just feeling suddenly very at home. And it was a really weird feeling. I was just like, this this, this, this feels like home. Like, wh- why? I've never been to this place before, and yet it's somehow slightly familiar. Um, so it was not, I can't remember a particular moment, but it just it just seemed like it, it very quickly became a really good fit for me. Um, more, also the more of the area around uh, Taipei, the more I sort of struck out into the rest of Taiwan, mm-hmm. the more I was like, oh, wow, this, this country is stunning. Um, I think it back in those days, it's maybe a bit better now, but back in sort of 2010, 2011, Taiwan wasn't really marketing itself at all in England or a lot yeah. of other countries. It was very much kind of, it seemed quite undiscovered, really. Yes. Uh, when I talk to friends and family in England, they they would know nothing about Taiwan, really. Uh, you know, so I think it's a lot better now at sort of getting itself out there internationally. But I remember like arriving and just being like, oh, there's this, this enormous like Grand Canyon-esque gorge here that I had no idea was there. Uh, <laughs> it was stunning and it was like something out of an old painting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, when I, whenever I introduce Taiwan to the audience with, um, or, or even talk to taxi driver and they would say, mm. oh, so you mean Thailand, right? So, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is, I, I hope oh. it's getting out better. That's, that's, that's my main purpose to distinguish Taiwan from Thailand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I even had family members. I think I've been living here a year already and I had a couple of family members who thought I was in Thailand still. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, there you go. Um, I think with the whole uh, pandemic that's happened this year, yes. I think a lot more people have heard of Taiwan now because of because it's done quite a good job in prevention of that. Um, yeah. the, the, I, no one had to go into lockdown here or anything. So yeah. Please tell us more a little bit of what you are doing now and uh, what's those uh, beautiful painting and drawing that we could learn from you okay um so the the drawing that i do um especially the kind of cityscape map drawings are kind of something i've always done ever since i was really a uh, small child mm-hmm. um back when i was little they used to be kind of fantasy places mm-hmm. but as i've grown older they tend to be real places um the first one of those was actually drawn while studying geography at Nottingham. Um, it was Paris, and it was uh, it was part of um, part of a project on one of the third year geography modules. The lecturer was called like Mike Heffernan and told me like display the changes of revolutionary Paris in whatever way you feel like doing. And I just I'd I'd always be making sort of drawings and stuff, and I was like I'm gonna try and like combine those together. Right. And I learned so much about Paris during the process, a, a ton of stuff, like a, a whole like book's worth of stuff almost. Like I had a really amazingly enjoyable time um, doing that. So as soon as I finished that, I started Nottingham. I was like, actually, there's a lot of Nottingham I didn't know, even by wow. third year. And I thought this could be a great way to actually properly get to know my mm-hmm. university city and have like a really cool kind of memento, mm-hmm. uh, almost like thing for when I'm in another country mm. when I leave mm. so that's how Nottingham ended up getting uh, made and then someone I'd, I'd thought about doing Taipei in the while I was there in the first year I hadn't much time 
to work on it though. I mean, I, I was really teaching a lot. By the second year, I had a little bit more time. I'd like cut back my hours a bit and I started to get to know uh, Taipei a bit more. Um, your first, like my first year in Taipei was very MRT dependent, the uh, subway. And you just sort of would pop up out of the ground, out from underground. And I only knew sort of little bits of pieces of Taipei where I just popped up from an MRT station. So I started uh, walking between the stations and seeing what I found right. and gradually photographing it. And then I didn't think I'd be able to make a drawing because it's such a high rise city and 101 so ridiculously big that I thought anything, any drawing would look, look so stupidly out of proportion with the <laughs> rest mm, of the city. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> But I was kind of, I kind of got taken by the idea and started experimenting a bit, um, found a kind of way that 101 didn't completely dwarf everything else. Yeah. Uh, and, and then I couldn't really stop myself. Like the more I drew, the more I was actually finding out about Taiwan and Taipei and the more interested I was becoming in the city. So it then it sort of, it, it took on a little bit of a life of its own. Um, as soon as I finished drawing Taipei, uh, I started drawing Dada Chen, which is like Dada a Chen, sort of yeah. smaller, more, more historic part of Taipei. That's right. And uh, couldn't really. And it's 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 been continuous since then. I can't like every time I every time I finish one, I'm like, okay, now we're just gonna like take a little break and have a holiday or something for a week and it, does, it doesn't work I'm mean, like instantly thinking about the next one because you uh, mentioned about a lot of research information would help you and i wonder how and what are that information i mean that was uh part of the drive to actually do this was to know more about the place that i was living um to feel a bit more integrated not just looking and seeing and just drawing what I saw. I also kind of wanted to know what I was drawing. Like, why, why is this place like this? Um, I remember going through a really dense high rise part of the city and then coming across a, almost like a little village that was kind of marooned in, a, in amongst all of these huge towers. And I was like, what, what is this doing here? This land must be worth billions. How, how is this village surviving? Yeah. And so I would go home and I'd, I'd, I think I just would type in the address <laughs> of some of the street <laughs> and yeah. find out like what was going on there. And it turned out that was um, a military family's family village uh, oh. where, where sort of dependents um, yeah. are from, of old soldiers and their descendants were living. Yeah. Um, it's now gone, actually. That was, it was called Huaguang, that particular one. So that, that I started sort of writing a bit about these places um, because you know if you just look at the drawings you can see all these places but I was kind of like if I was looking at this I'd want to know what that was <laughs> and uh, sure, so I, yeah. I kind of, I kind of uh, started writing accompaniments to to it uh, any any particularly interesting place that I came across I'd start uh, drawing that and that also led to some of the smaller drawings like um, the Lo Sheng sanatorium drawing the uh, Toad Mountain one, the Dado Chain one actually started because there was an area that some people wanted to preserve, uh, had like an interesting social history. And they, they asked if I could draw it to kind of bring some attention to it. So I was like, sure, it's actually a really interesting area. Like, I'll do that. Mm, mm, and that mm. Bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> so, right. Through your pens and eyes, you sketch out the stories behind that. And I think yeah. that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of your drawing. So that's why I'm sort of, I'm, I'm hoping that the next year will be perhaps like writing a, writing a book and having the drawings in the book, but also bringing that together with, with a lot of the research of, around Taipei that I've done and around the rest of Taiwan. Because yeah. that seems like, the perfect way to kind of present it. Yeah. So this is your sort of the uh, near future project, isn't it? Of um, yeah. writing down of your research along with your drawing and also sort of have a very good 
uh, full picture of both. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that. That seems like that seems like the best way to kind of achieve what I'm trying to aim for here. Mm. Yeah. My, I mean, the more I the more I think about it, the more it just seems like the natural natural way to go with it. Yeah. Um, just uh, I just hope it's actually as interesting as I hope it's going to be. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sure it's, it's going to be. I mean, um, it's you, you see. So this is this comes back to my original um, uh, purpose or intention to talk with you in a sense that I'm just curious about your curiosity. Okay. <laughs> so if I I can make it understandable in that sense and I, I yeah. think yeah I don't know where that curiosity comes from my mum I was talking with my mum um a few days ago on Skype yeah. and she was like even even as a two-year-old you every time I took you out in the push chair your eyes were wide open and you were pointing at stuff and looking at stuff and being like what's this what's this what's this so I, I guess it was it's almost like just always been there yeah. uh which is so, kind of uh, like, I don't know how you sort of foster or develop curiosity. I guess it's something you either have or don't, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, um, it's, it is, it was born in you, let's say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's probably the accurate way to say it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that uh, we appreciate your curiosity because um, you present the beautiful stories through your draw through through your uh, drawing and painting and now even further of your writing in the very near future to come out with yeah mm -hmm. will that be many on taipei or that would also include other parts of taiwan i think it would have to include other parts of taiwan because there's definitely things outside of taipei that i'd like to put in there mm -hmm. um, i mean at the moment i'm right i'm working on um Gaosheng, part of Gaosheng called Hamashing oh, and okay. it's a sort of old port area of Gaosheng yeah, yeah, and yeah. So I'm learning a lot about that area as I'm drawing it and I visited a couple of weeks ago as well so yeah. I, I'd want to put that in too <laughs> you know <laughs> wow sort of put my from from that part of the part of Taiwan in there yeah um, yeah wow but That's uh, cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, it's possible that I do, I haven't decided yet if I'd want it to just be on one city or if I'd want, mm -hmm. want it to be everywhere. Um, the way I think I'm kind of wired is that I just want to put everything in there, but <laughs> sometimes. Well, or you, you can you can do the first Valentine Pay, second Valentine Kaohsiung, this kind of thing, you know, whichever, the combination. Yeah. <laughs> it's a last long project, is it? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I. I hope. Yeah. I think. I think something like that would be pretty cool. Um. I'd like. I maybe. Maybe a first one with a lot of different places, and then I'd go a bit deeper into each city if. If I get the chance to make subsequent. Um. Subsequent books. A lot of uh, exciting future to come. Let's say.